time now to do the news. Yes, yes. news. Yes, yeah. it is the news. Now, for people who think that there is just literally too much room in the back of a standard Mini, don't worry, because there is now a coupe. There it is. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Any details? I can tell you it's... Uh... It's, it's between uh, 18 and £24,000, and the top model has 208 horsepower. Now, a lot of people have been talking about its roof, oh, uh, yeah. unsurprisingly. Many themselves say it's styled to look like a baseball cap being worn backwards. <laughs> Why would I want that? That's my roof. Uh, I think this is a car that probably at night, when you leave it, entertains itself by spitting at the elderly. Um, <laughs> They should have called it the lout. The slob. It steal the its own, slobs Steal its own idea. wheels and put itself on bricks. I like the idea of the slob. Anyway, before we do the news properly, there's something I need to explain. Very, very keen viewers may have noticed that this hour-long programme, Top Gear, is sometimes 62 or even 63 minutes long. But this week, BBC Two have told us it must be 59 minutes. No ifs or buts. On the nose, in fact, all the programmes on BBC Two tonight must be exactly to length because they're going at 10 o'clock live to the MotoGP race. Yes. I'm not interested in bike racing. Well, that's hardly relevant, is it? Just because you're not interested in something doesn't mean that the BBC should deny all the people who are the opportunity of seeing it. Bike racing only works on YouTube. What? Well, you just see the crashes and then... Oh, them. don't be sick! <laughs> Hands up if you want to see bike racing. Two... So Dude. about 8% of the population want yeah. me to get a move Yes, on. they do, and I am one of them, and so is James, so we're going to press on and start with the news. News of an event coming up, the Chumley Pageant of Power. The what? Chumley Pageant of Power. Oh, well, that's excellent. We're the world's biggest motoring show, everybody, and we begin the news with an item about a village fete. No, it's, the no. It's, it's like a northern Goodwood Festival of Speed. So a Goodwood with pies and gravy. No! Uh, no. Anyway, the point is, there's going to be a car at it I wanted to show you. It's this. It's called the Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's magnificent. Basically, it's a 1908, I think it is, BMW chassis. Made in the 1920s, and it's got a 46 litre 12 cylinder aeroplane. 46 litre? 46 litre 12 cylinders. I've got a shot of the engine. Here's the actual engine out of it. Holy! It's like a Turner painting with steam, speed, and fire. It's magnificent. I'm going to send that to Greenpeace so they can hang it up in their foyer. Yeah. <laughs> they love it, actually, because it does 0.18 miles to the gallon. Yeah. You kid. Yeah. When I love the engine, but what fascinates me about old cars like this is why people feel compelled to get into period costume before driving them. Uh, I mean, you live in a 1970s house. Do you feel the need to wear a shirt from the 90s? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he does, actually, yeah, he yes. Is. He is. Attention, morons everywhere. Mercedes have a new hardcore AMG version of one of their cars. It's from their especially ridiculous range of black editions. Oh, Here now, is. I'm sorry, this is a car for connoisseurs. No, it's a car for... Yes, it is. It's for people who know the difference, for example, between Sweden and Finland. Yes, all right. <laughs> so, uh... This is the new black edition of the C-Class, OK? Uh, it'll cost you £110,000. It's got the old 6.2-litre V8, tuned version of that, rather than the twin-turbo AMG engines of today. Uh, you also get the seven-speed uh, flappy paddle gearbox from an SLS. Not so good. But I think it looks Ridiculous. fantastic. It's fantastic. I think it looks infantile. It does. <laughs> James, <laughs> James, you are so old, you think Werther's originals are infantile. <laughs> can, I just, can I just clarify this a little bit? He has got the old CLK Black. Yes, I do. And he do. And I went in it the other day. And you loved it. I hated it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The ride is stupid. It's like being in a touring car. What's wrong with that? No, nothing at all. If you're, I don't know, let's say, in a touring car race. <laughs> if you want to use it, let's imagine, on a road in, let's say, the world, it's absolutely <laughs> stupid. It's a terrible, you terrible may mock. You may mock. Thank you. It's ridiculous. <laughs> the, fact is, the fact is that the CLK Black is holding its value a lot better than, I don't know, 911s that you two have, because they only sold a hundred of them. Yes, they did, they did. They would have sold many more, but most of the people that turned up to buy them were wearing those jackets that do up at the back. Do you know? <laughs> and they've only been out for the day. Oh, I want one of those! I want one of those! Like that. Yeah, they had eaten the pens that you're supposed to use to fill the options for. Them. <laughs> it's a stupid car! It is a stupid car. It's a ridiculous... Oh, don't feel sorry for him! Look at the wheel arches on it! It's just... <laughs> Thank you.
Now, have you noticed how some of the best-looking cars you can buy these days are like ordinary family saloons or hatchbacks or... Oh, I know what you mean. Yes. ...estates. Yeah. I mean, Citroen sends a picture of their new DS5, OK? That, that is a good-looking, sort of ordinary, mid-sized yeah. car. Every day, but good-looking. It's not alone. What's that Kia called from a while back? The Rooney. Not the Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> Rio. 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 That was an awful-looking car, but then they've now launched this, which is called the... something or other. The Optic, isn't it? Optima. Optical. Optima. Optima. Doesn't matter. Nobody who watches Top Gear is going to buy a Kia, but if they did, that would be... <laughs> Yeah, all Kia drivers are watching Countryfile on the other side going, it's Adam's farm in a minute, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, look at the little bar lamb. Oh, oh make what? a trail for what's on the other side, why not? Countryfile's a brilliant <laughs> show. Good, Particularly when it's cold and Julia Bradbury's out Leave in it, leave it! <laughs> the Peugeot 508 is a good-looking car as well, isn't it? It is, no, we've got a picture of it here. Because what makes that particularly good is that Peugeots in recent years have had these sort of the big guppy mouths on them. Oh. It's that. Yes. That is a very big impersonation of a Peugeot. No, that's what Not they used now, to be. Uh, uh, I can only impersonate a Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. Can you do any other car? No, I can only do Peugeots, but I can do any Peugeot you name. 308? 207. <laughs> you know, what's the people carrier? Can you do that one? Yeah, hang on, that's... <laughs> I'll stump him. You know the tiny little one, the 1007 with the electric sliding doors? Oh! Uh, uh. <laughs> exactly like that. And then there's the Vauxhall Insignia. I was following one of those the other day. That's basically a Vectra. Yeah, fabulous. A really good look. And the great thing about it is it's got positive camber on its back wheels. Well, you've got a positive camber and you look ridiculous. <laughs> you it. Oh, you have? You have? Oh, no, we, so we followed you around every airport in the world and you lumber along with your stupid legs bending out of the knee like that <laughs> it's like positive camber and you look terrible looks good, looks good positive camber no, it doesn't it's right. you look, you look like a knackered spitfire yeah spitfires are cool no a triumph spitfire, spitfire. they're not cool old i'm assuming that's oil that's leaking out of it it's because i'm set up for handling <laughs> You're set up. Uh, mm, if, I, if you could find a 100-metre track that did that, I could beat Usain Bolt. Because I can run down corners. So you're claiming you've been set up for cornering? Well, you can shut up. You look like a car that's had its wheels nicked. <laughs> <laughs> now, last week, these two morons spent good money on two second-hand V12 Coopers. They spent the same money as you'd spend on the Nissan Pixo, which is the cheapest new car on sale in Britain. And I was prepared to bet all of my hair that within two weeks, one of them would have gone pop. So, chaps, what's the news? Uh, my BMW, 100%, not a problem. Thank you, still working perfectly. There you Excellent. go. Excellent. Yeah. Really, there really you go. Excellent. Now. And Moving your, on. No, your Mercedes CL. <laughs> my Mercedes, yes. yes. I bought a Mercedes 600 CL. Yes, you did. It's quite interesting, this, because I have a photograph here uh, that I'd like to share with everybody of the Top Gear car park. There, in fact, is, um, <laughs> is Hammond's uh, BMW. Working. And where's your Mercedes? Warm and dry. Now, moving on. <laughs> Tell the ladies and gentlemen why it isn't in that space. I can't remember. Tell them. <laughs> Tell them! Oh, one of its ignition coils has gone a bit wonky. <laughs> Now, it's interesting that you should say that, because I did some research and I found out that the ignition coil for the Nissan Pixo is £138. Mm -hmm. Yes. How much is it for the Mercedes? £878. <laughs> Sorry, did that include uh, fitting? No. No, no. <laughs> did it include the VAT? No. No. <laughs> So what, in fact, was the cost of a new ignition coil for your Mercedes? So impressed. Twelve hundred pounds, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I keep my hair. <laughs> That's annoying. <laughs> now, hey, you know when you're pregnant? Uh, no. Uh, no, not recently. Yeah, I mean, yours is coming yes, in. Yes, this is an You know when I'm pregnant? <laughs> And you go for a scan and they're able to tell whether it's a boy or a girl. Yeah. Well, uh, a, a very kind lady has sent us a photograph of a scan that she's had done of her forthcoming arrival. And it seems to suggest she's giving birth to a stig. Um, <clears throat> look here. Look. Oh, she is? Oh, look! It's, oh, look! All curled up. That's nice. We were a bit worried about this because we told him time and again to stop impregnating people. Oh. It is all. He made Michael Gambon pregnant twice. It was twice. <laughs> On consolation, it'll probably be a fairly quick birth, I imagine. Oh. Well, unless he comes out sideways. <laughs> <laughs> now, can I just say, as we know, birds sometimes defecate 
on your car. And at this time of year, that's very bad for the paintwork, because the lacquer is soft. What? Where are you going with this, mate? Where I'm going is this. A bird defecated on my car this week. Well, oh, well that's to terrible. be fair, that's not that unusual, mate. It'll have happened to people here. Not like this. OK, I've brought an iPad here. I know how they work, of course. <laughs> here is the bird. Yes, it's some bird poo on your back window. Now, that's a actually... significant quantity of bird poo, would you not? You'd say, that's a big bird that did that. Look at this. <laughs> you get to there and you think, it must be the end. <laughs> that is a metre of faeces! <laughs> what bird can do a metre of faeces? I am two metres tall and I can't do a metre of faeces. <laughs> Hang on, you live in Oxfordshire, you've got yes. there those red kites there, and they are big birds. They are big birds, and they are carnivores. Now, I examined this faeces, and there were seven cherry stones in it. <laughs> well, maybe it, ha it had a field mouse in a cherry jus in Oxfordshire. <laughs> it didn't. If it, the cherry stones were in its gut, it must have eaten the cherry hole, which means it must have had a mouth like a Peugeot. <laughs> what kind of bird can have a gallon of guano in its gut and still take off and achieve sufficient altitude to defecate on my Range Rover? Big one. What? Maybe it was a flying cow. What? <laughs> James, you really do live in Hammersmith, don't you? <laughs> We should bear in mind this is the man who believes cows lay eggs. And he does. <laughs> you said that on the show. You I said that. I hmm? said eggs come from cows. Well, did you see that? <laughs> can I just say, can I just say, I want to have a competition on this. If anybody can find a bigger piece of bird dirt than oh, that on God. their car, take a photograph and send it to us at uh, Top Gear London, where are we? Seven, w W127TS. Mark your envelope. You really are plumbing new depths this week. <laughs> well, you are. The, the Nissan has a thing called launch control. It's basically just a computer that sorts everything out for you. So you plant your foot, wham, you're off, you get a perfect start every time. It's, yes, it's there amazing, is just it? one problem with launch control. It is the stupidest thing ever fitted to a car. Why? <laughs> no, seriously, because if you think about it, what you have to do to engage it, right, you... Series of switches. And then you put your left foot on the brake, plant your right foot hard down on the accelerator, yeah? And when the lights go green, you take your foot off the brake and it goes. Computer sorts it out, as you say. So, OK, you're at the lights. <laughs> and everybody's looking going, what an unintelligent man. <laughs> it does make a bit of a scene. It does, really. You know what, the most uncivilised thing you can do with a car is use launch control at a zebra crossing. <laughs> That's really... <laughs> old lady, hurry him up. Can I just say one other thing as well about launch control? Only one of us has it fitted to our car. Yeah, it's true. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it it's no, him. It's him. <laughs> James May has yeah. launch control. Yeah, I don't use it. Really? No, <laughs> you don't say. Are you sure? No, it's... Every time you leave the pie shop, thanks for the pies, I'm off. <laughs> and now... We must do the news, and we start off with news that since James drove that Virage, Aston Martin have launched a new car. And here it is. It's called the V12 Zagata. There it is. And, uh, James, you'll be particularly interested in this, mate, I think. Will I? Yeah, you will. You will. Uh, because the, the boss of the company was quoted this week uh, as saying, the Nürburgring is where we sign off every <laughs> new <laughs> Quoting. And there could be no better place for the new V12 Zagato to be finally tested, said the boss of Aston Martin. For crying out loud. <laughs> Do you know what? If I'd been in Bomber Command in 1943, I would have bombed the Nürburgring every single night. <laughs> Am I the only person who thinks like this? This bad back of yours, would you say it makes you a bit crabby? There's nothing to do with that bad back. I'm not the, he's got a bad back as well, but he oh, won't okay, agree with okay, me about it. Okay. Ride is important. All right, all right. Bomb it. <laughs> it was a bad policy. Look where we are now. We no longer have Dresden Cathedral or all that lovely pottery, but we do have the Nürburgring, and under my bombing policy, we wouldn't have cars that rode badly, and you'd have a nice cathedral to look at and better saucers. <laughs>
move on. Yes, let's move yes. on. Um, now, we have been sent by a viewer a copy of a motorcycling magazine from 1976. We have a, a picture of it here, the front cover. Sort of thing you love that, isn't it, James? Mm, lovely. What distressed us greatly was there was an advertisement on the back page for some leathers. And it was the model that was being used that has terrified us. Here it is. There is no point denying that it's you because he's wearing brown shoes. It's got to be you. It is you. You looked exactly the same in 1976 as you. When were you born? Well, I, was only, I was only 12. You weren't, though, were you? <laughs> you know, I've speculated many, many, many times over the years on what sort of a man appears as a model in leather. Yeah. <laughs> You've let the motorcycling side down there badly. We have more news. Uh, a few weeks ago, I held a small birthday party for the E-Type Jaguar. Yes, I recall. It was subtle. Somebody else is having one uh, at Silverstone uh, the weekend of July the 22nd, and they say a thousand E-Types will be there. I think what they mean is a thousand E-Types will attempt to be there. Yeah. yeah. On that particular day, a thousand E-Types will try and start. Yeah. Some <laughs> E-Types will be there. Maybe. Why will they be there, though, really? I I've never understood that. So you drive hundreds of miles in your car to look at some cars that are exactly the same as the car that you just drove there in. Did, did, well, is there anyone here from a car owners club? You are. And, and this is which club? Marlin. The what? Marlin. That's Marlin. Marlin. That's a fish. That's a very lonely. <laughs> no, it's a very lonely owners club. That he goes and stands in a field all by himself. <laughs> is anybody here from a car club that's got more than one member? What? Renault Clio Owners Club. How could there be an owners club for that? Do you go and meet and stand in fields? Car parks. Car parks. <laughs> oh, well, I want to join. Well, I've got a Renault I'm Clio. So have I. Any other car, car makers here? Anyone from the MG Owners Club? Well, not here, obviously. No, obviously, <laughs> that's a good point. They won't be here. They'll be on the A3 going, oh, no. <laughs> I wonder, sometimes, do people who are MG enthusiasts buy them hoping they break down. They do, don't they? They yeah, think, like, that way I can get underneath it and get my fingernails all dirty. Well, no, because if you think, if all they wanted to do was drive around in an open-top two-seater, they'd buy a Mazda MX-5, because mm. that just is always going to work. Exactly. I think they're mad. It's like being an amateur vet and saying, I'm going to deliberately buy a dog that's poorly in the hope it goes wrong and I can fix it. <laughs> And we start with news you may have heard of this week. A new flying car has been announced. Costs £150,000. Here's a shot of it in the air. That's what it looks like as an aeroplane. And here's a shot of it on the ground. <laughs> it's just a crumpled aeroplane, isn't it? It just comes pre-crashed. <laughs> There's an even bigger problem I've thought of, which is, I think everybody knows, James, you do have a light aircraft. Mm. And before you take off, you have to do pre-flight checks. Well, a few, yeah. yeah. What are they? Hey? Well... You have to check the fuel that it Why? hasn't got any Why moisture you check the fuel? in it. Hasn't got water in it. How would Walter get oh, in Oh, we fuel? haven't got time for this! <laughs> no, I'm really interested. No, we, we haven't got time it's for this. It's only bike racing. Yes. James, tell me more about no. your pre-flight check. No, just... Actually, you know what? Even I would rather watch bike racing than listen to James talk about his uh, pre-flight exactly. checks. So get off. So I will move it on. Can anybody think? of a device fitted to modern cars that's more stupid than launch control. You're fitted to quite a lot, mate. <laughs> no, has anybody got any idea? Because well, like a gizmo, like launch gizmo control. Fit what? Cu no, cu no, they're just, utterly... They're, they're very useful, you stupid idiots. <laughs> cup holders and brilliant things for if you need a drink and they'll fall... Yeah. No, the, I have a, the, actually a really good one is Mercedes and BMW now fit a night vision camera, OK? So you can drive along at night and the dashboard has got this screen showing you what's on the road ahead. So I was driving up a country lane the other day, single track, OK? Doing about 60 miles an hour, which is legal. Middle of the night, I thought, God, I'm going to try and drive just using the night vision camera. Why am I not surprised? Turn the lights off, yeah? Look down to see where I was going, and there's just a message saying, night vision not available when lights off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can hear all the bushes on the... Forgive me! That's night vision that only works in the day. With the lights on, yeah. Even for snipers, would it? Stand no. still, I'll just... Bing, lights on now, <laughs> I can line up. <laughs> Last year, my CLK, uh, Mercedes, 
Stupid, uh, stupid <laughs> car. This stupid wheel arch. You may think it's stupid, but it's very determined, OK? My CLK, it said, one day when I got in it, 24 days until the next service. Now, I mentioned this on the programme a year ago, OK? And I thought, I wonder what'll happen if I take it to 25 days? Because its German brain won't be able to compute the fact that somebody has disobeyed a direct order. <laughs> OK? The thing was, on the 24th day or whenever it was, Mercedes turned up while I was out and took it away for a service. It really annoyed me. Good news. Yesterday, it suddenly said, nine days until service due. <laughs> Brilliant. What I've done this time is I've parked it in a London underground garage and I'm not going to tell anybody which one. Because <laughs> I want to see what happens when it goes to minus one. No, that's dangerous. It could panic. Like, like a horse in the seventies going mad! Or it's probably already been building a glider so it can escape. I thought that's why I've put it in an underground car park and not a multi-story so it can't fly away. Yes. It's probably been specially trained to take a cyanide pill. <laughs> It'll have hidden it in one of its massive wheel arches. Right, so I must end it now. <laughs> So when I get back to it, you think it'll be dead? Ah, completely. Just... Now, there's a company in America called SSC, and a few years ago they brought out a car called the Aero, which for a time was the fastest car in the world, verified by Guinness, faster than the uh, Bugatti Veyron. Well, now they've come up with another new car, but a picture of it here. We have no details at all, but we do know its name. It's called the... <laughs> That's interesting. Is this going to be a, a rival for the new Pagani? <laughs> <laughs> what? The, the, the replacement for the Zonda is called the... the <laughs> Hurrah! A, a, it's spelled H-U-A-Y-R-A. -A, the <laughs> Hurrah! So, so you've got a choice now, if you're a wealthy person, between the twat <laughs> or the hurrah. So a car maker's now naming their cars after the noises people make when they're punched in the stomach. <laughs> The Lamborghini. <laughs> good news. Now, actually, it's not good news. It's just some news. OK, MG is back. This yeah. is the new car. Here it is. It's called the MG6. You can have it as a saloon or as a hatchback. Um, it's supposed to be very modern in every way, but I don't think the factory where it's being made in Longbridge is modern at all because got the press release they sent out here and it says the first car was driven off the line by the only woman who works there. It's not very modern, is it? No. Did they go on to say, and best of all, she has a smashing pair of knockers. <laughs> very modern. No, don't, don't, don't tell me it says next, don't worry chaps, we'll let her drive it off, but we won't let her park it. Oh, God. <laughs> Welcome to 1950. <laughs> the is, the car's gone away for something. That's not a joke. <laughs> Now, the thing about this is, OK, we know that this is made in China by the Ling King, Wang King, Dong King, Nong King. <laughs> them, yeah, them. Keep going, keep going. Yes, yeah, that's all good. <clears throat> Corp heavy corporation industry, right, OK? And then it's shipped over to Birmingham, where they fix an MG badge on it, OK, and then sell it. But they say in the actual brochure, which I've got here, it talks about Le Mans and breaking land speed records, right? And says the MG embodies British sporting style. It doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> I think the only British sportiness in that is the glue they use to fix on the badge is made from a dead British racehorse. <laughs> that is the only sporty thing in that car, I reckon. Um, oh, well, now, wait a minute, it should add the press release, OK? They sent us, has got a typo on it. Here it is, look. What? Ear? Stops. Look, yeah, MG ear. Oh, yeah. I think this indicates the car will be a bit hit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Might be complete rap. Absolute ollocks. <laughs> Now, last weekend, James brought you news of a new Range Rover called the Evoque. Well, uh, this week, there's more new Range Rover news. Uh, there's a new Sport. Um, now, what's interesting about this is it has voice control, OK, uh, with what Land Rover call a say-what-you-see function. <laughs> now, in order to get the car to do things, OK, it brings up words on the screen and then you repeat them. Well, that's the that... point of that. Does it have a picture of the object next to it? Apple. Apple. I got it. <laughs> if it was that, you could have enormous fun with foreign markets. Like in Germany, you could bring up a picture of a squirrel. Why? No, because if you think about it, all Germans, no matter how well they speak English, can't say squirrel. Right, what's this? Oh, uh, that would be a squirrel. <laughs> Are there any Glaswegians here? Really, come here. Where are you? 
Come on, I want to just test it. Just talk to me. Are you actually from Glasgow? Yes. Right, can you say burglar alarm? Burglar alarm. Uh, anyway, there you go. A couple of other things about it. It's got an 825 watt stereo in it. What? Uh, That's more than Motorhead. A lot more. 17 speakers. And I'm sorry, but that front end is hideous. I don't know why they don't have just done with that car and just call it the Wilmslow. <laughs> the day is coming when they fit that with fake pillars on either side of the door, I'm warning you. <laughs>
and Colette. Signet and what? Colette sounds what? like lap dancing duo from Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> an ice skating duo. No, to be honest, we know we know that the Signet part is it's an Aston Martin Signet. It's the Colette thing. With what is Colette? Because it sounds like a feminine hygiene product. <laughs> <gasps> Well, I, I made a mistake. Did you? You get more than just the cushions. I do apologise. You also get quilted sun visors, some biscuits. <laughs> I'm reading this out. I'm just quoting what you get. A guide to Paris, a plastic camera, an empty bottle, and four compilation CDs featuring bands such as the Morning Benders. <laughs> so basically, they're just they're selling you a small Toyota full of clutter. 